Social media has created a new style of communication and there are now billions of conversations happening online. People are discussing trending news, various articles, they're sharing photos of their life, and even engaging with brands. And it all feels relatively natural to the consumer. All of these conversations present exciting opportunities for marketers. We can join in on a conversation to drive brand awareness or create our own conversations and empower our customers to do the marketing for us. Social media marketing is all about creating interactive moments with our customers to achieve a goal that we've defined. Oftentimes, that goal is driving traffic to our website or growing our brand's awareness online. But unlike other forms of marketing, social media taps into the idea of using your customer as a marketing vessel. The content that you share will hopefully then be liked, retweeted, shared again, blogged about, and so on. This viral effect is what makes social media marketing so effective. A simple like on a post could potentially expose that content to hundreds of customers that you normally wouldn't have access to. Because social media is so personal, when friends share content, it comes with another layer of credibility. Done right, social media has the potential to transform your business, but it does require a good strategy, some creativity, and a little bit of luck. Now, your social media might feature the major networks, or it could be as simple as a blog, a customer forum, or a small niche bookmarking site. Regardless of which network you leverage, it is important to understand the role social media marketing plays in growing your brand's awareness online. Social media marketing has the ability to bring a new kind of exposure to your business. By leveraging social media networks such as Facebook and Twitter, you'll find opportunities to capture new customers as well as re-engage existing ones. There's also more value in social media than just brand recognition and website traffic. Let's explore some of the other value adds within social media. First of all, social media marketing creates the opportunity to hear directly from your customers. Oftentimes, they'll share things with your social channels or ask questions that might help you identify how to serve them better. But beyond their direct interaction, you'll get a sense of what's important to your audience by looking at what they share and how frequently. With an active audience, you can ask for feedback or test ideas before creating larger marketing initiatives. Secondly, you'll establish credibility. Today's savvy consumers are spending more time researching brands and products before spending money. With an active social media presence, you'll allow your customers to indirectly advocate for you. If they're leaving a positive comment, sharing a review, or interacting with your content, it'll boost your overall credibility. Thirdly, you'll develop a community. A community is an important tool for driving awareness of your brand. As customers become advocates, they'll run to social media to shower you with praise. It's this community that will ignite your word of mouth marketing and help you reach untapped territory. Friends look to friends for recommendations and social media allows you to activate those opportunities and expose your brand to a new audience. Now, these are just a few examples on the value of social media. Take the time to look at your own objectives. What would be the biggest value for you? Each value can have a different motivation. You might want to build a community simply to retain your existing customer base, whereas another business might build a community for the sole purpose of getting content to go viral. Decide your main goal for leveraging social media marketing. While Facebook and Twitter share certain similarities in that they're both social networks where you can post and consume information, they're actually two very different platforms. In a nutshell, Twitter tends to be a public, real-time feed of short thoughts, whereas Facebook is a more private network used to catalog information and ideas with friends and family. Twitter is perfect for short, rapid communication, and it tends to be a top choice for consumers looking to get support or provide a shout out to brands. Twitter also has impressive mobile saturation, with around 80% of Twitter users checking their feeds multiple times throughout the day from a mobile device. Facebook boasts a high percentage of users who have graduated from college, so you'll find a strong middle class represented. And if your brand appeals to those ages between 24 and 50, there's an opportunity on Facebook for you. 
Younger users are shifting away from Facebook and joining the ranks of Instagram or Snapchat. As for the gender ratio, it's fairly well split between male and female users. You can be on both networks simultaneously, but understanding these fundamental differences will help you determine the right strategy. And when we think about strategy, consider that Twitter content has a short lifespan. Almost 90% of all engagement on a tweet happens within the first hour. That number might shift if you get a retweet by a large brand or person. But remember that it does have a really short lifespan. With Facebook updates, they can live on for several days. Facebook delivers content when it thinks it's most relevant to a particular user. Think of Facebook as an ongoing conversation and Twitter as a real-time instantaneous one. As you explore when and how frequently to post content, you'll find that both networks have different optimal posting times. These times are going to be dependent on your audience, your geographic location, and the category of business you operate within. If you are just starting out, I recommend exploring both networks. Twitter is a great place for handling customer service and providing short updates as they relate to your business. Facebook is an excellent place to share in-depth content and to create conversations around particular topics. Looking at the differences between both Facebook and Twitter, is there one that really sticks out for your business? Remember, starting out, it doesn't hurt to try both, but there might be one that fits a little bit better into your social media marketing strategy. Over 336 million people worldwide turn to Twitter every day, and there they talk about things that interest them. They might be interacting with a trending topic, such as the launch of the new iPhone. They might be learning about world events, talking about their day-to-day life, or even interacting with brands like yours. Being a business on Twitter is about creating and capturing these conversations. You might leverage Twitter to share details on a new product, a behind-the-scenes look on your process, or helpful tips that in turn can boost your retention. You might even convey your brand's personality by sharing other news from your industry or adding an opinion to an existing topic. As a business, the goal is to obtain followers by adding value to the Twitter network. By building followers, you can expand on existing customer relationships and develop new leads all while building a visible presence. Almost every major brand has a presence on Twitter, each with a unique goal. But at the core, the biggest benefit to being on Twitter is having another channel to educate and engage with current and potential customers. Before you start diving in, it's important to note that Twitter is a very timely network. That means it requires a willingness to commit to frequent posts. Otherwise, your brand runs the risk of looking stale and unengaged. Customers really enjoy interacting with brands on Twitter. They love to give a shout out for a job well done just as much as they like to know that you're responsive to questions should issues arise. So your first step is to determine if you're willing to commit the necessary resources to maintain your presence on Twitter. As a starting point, decide to interact once or twice a day until you see what works best for your business. With the right level of commitment, businesses can see great results. People want to hear from brands like you on Twitter. It's a quick way for them to evaluate your brand, to check for a special offer, and to see what others have to say about your brand itself. Once you decide to use Twitter for your business, the right time investment mixed with high quality strategy will help your brand grow. To be successful on Twitter, you'll need to identify your core marketing objective. At a high level, you'll want to understand what it is that you're wishing to accomplish. By understanding your objective, you'll be able to quickly identify whether or not your efforts are successful. For some brands, Twitter might simply be a customer support hub. This is a place to respond to customers and engage with the community. Your goals might be measured on the qualitative scale. This means you'll have to determine if the quality of your engagements with your customers, using this example, are worth your brand's effort on Twitter. For other brands, the focus might be to establish brand recognition, so they'll spend their time and energy building authority in their niche. 
The success metrics will be a blend of qualitative and quantitative. So they'll look at the amount of reach their tweets are getting and the volume of followers in order to see if the objective is being met. The types of responses and mentions the brand receives will also help determine how valuable the overall effort is. And the last major focus for a brand might be the actual sales or traffic component. So that means that you'll include links to the website, promotional opportunities for your products, and product announcements. And this objective is easy to track, so it's highly quantitative and will be measured directly through the revenue that you generate. You certainly can have multiple objectives, but the key is to identify your primary one and then build your strategy around that one focus. If sales is the goal, you'll need to attract followers, build high quality tweets that gain traction and include relevant calls to action to encourage the sale. You'll also need to provide customer service with all that being said, and at the same time, generate brand recognition in the process so you can see how they all work together. Take a few minutes now to write out your marketing objective for Twitter and decide if you'll be measuring the results by quality, quantity, or a true mix. As a business, you'll be balancing tweets that maintain your community and tweets that are promotional in nature. Just as you have a marketing objective for your Twitter account in general, I encourage you to also have an objective for each tweet you create. Think through what is the goal? A goal might be to drive traffic to your website, to encourage signups for an event, or to earn retweets to expand the reach of your brand. To begin crafting a great tweet is to first identify this goal. Next, you'll need to decide what the call to action is, and that is going to be what's necessary for the person to do in order to achieve your first goal. That might be including a link to the website or event along with copy that motivates the click-through. Or it might even be asking for a retweet and providing an incentive or inspirational reason to do so. Once you know what your call to action is, you can work to weave it into a message that a follower will engage with. People are more likely to share and respond to tweets that inspire or entertain them, or tweets that solve a problem or even answer a difficult question. Also, including a photo or video will add to the virality of your message. Regardless of your goal, try to keep the tweet conversational. Work towards a communication style that is genuine and approachable. If the marketing objective feels natural and unforced, it'll gain better traction with the community. Let's review what makes people share content, especially on Twitter. People like to share something that is funny, either helpful, it might be newsworthy, and they also love to share inspiring information. So these are the key topics that you're going to want to focus on. Take those into account when you craft a tweet, and then you can look at the goal of the tweet with the intended action and think about the proper language that you need to surround it with. That surrounding language or the inclusion of a video or image is what's going to cause your followers to interact with it. But keep in mind, a well-crafted tweet is only as good as the time is delivered. So pay attention to timely delivery to take advantage of key trends, existing conversations, or the times your followers are most likely to be checking their feeds. Take a few extra minutes now to think through a couple tweets that you want to send out. What is your goal for each individual tweet? Understand this and you'll gain valuable insight into what works for your customers. Conveying your message in 280 characters or less can only get you so far. To add extra value and context to your tweets, consider embedding photos or videos. The social landscape has really shifted. Text updates were once a norm, but now rich media is prevalent. When you're scrolling through a timeline of posts, images really jump out and add so much more to the text at hand. Plus, images take up a lot more space, so you gain all of that valuable attention from a user. When you select the photo or video, it's important to consider the relevancy of what you're posting. You want the media to draw attention to the post, not detract from it. The audience on Twitter isn't looking for these lofty, overloaded images, but instead just tidbits that they can consume in an instant. 
Twitter makes it very straightforward to share images. What's great is all these images will not count against your Twitter character limit. And you're also able to add additional photos. You would do that using the same process. So you would select the photo icon at the left and add additional photos. It would create a gallery of sort within your tweet. Also, I want to call your attention to the ability to tag people in your tweets. So if you're tweeting an image of someone else on Twitter, you can add their handle and then they'll receive a notification that lets them know that they've been tagged in your image. You'll notice this circle icon at the bottom right is going to show me how many characters I have remaining. Now, once that's completed, you're going to select tweet. So a user is going to see the text and then the image below it. Then they can click on the image itself to get a pop-out view. And this makes the image even bigger. Plus it includes information that we've posted right here below the image itself. Now, one thing to note is that these images and tweets are going to look different on mobile devices. So I highly recommend that you take the time to review your images, both as they appear on desktop and as they appear on mobile devices, because you may have to make some tweaks. GIFs are a great way to add additional interest to your tweets. And it's here that you get an animated GIF library. So you don't have to worry about creating them. They're all already created. You can simply search for the one you want to use in the library. You are also able to upload your own animated one if you like. So here you can simply browse by selecting into any of the categories, or you can type in a keyword to search for a specific GIF that matches what you're looking to present. A lot of times you'll notice that new brands and companies replying to customers are using animated GIFs as a way to interact. GIFs are a great way to engage your audience, lighten things up and make things fun. Now, the last thing I want to show you is adding videos. First, you're going to need to host your video on a major site such as YouTube or Vimeo. And once you've done that, you'll grab the share link that is specific to that exact video. Then from the compose tweet window, you can simply paste the link. You'll notice that nothing appears in the preview window, but when I choose tweet, what happens is Twitter is going to convert this into a, what's called a rich card, which shows a description, the title of the video, where the video is hosted and shows a play icon. So the user can interact with the video right here on the timeline. So here you can see the importance of adding rich media to your Twitter content. It's going to grab the attention of the reader. It's going to create additional engagement, and it's just going to help you use the real estate that Twitter provides a little more effectively. Twitter has its own analytics dashboard and you'll find it at analytics.twitter.com. Once you're there, you'll sign in with your account. Along the top, you'll notice that we have a headline and this headline announces the total impressions that we've received over this 28 day period. Below that, you can see each tweet along with its individual impressions, engagements and engagement rate. An engagement is a total number of interactions with a tweet. So this means any click on the tweet, whether it's a retweet, a favorite, a view of your username, etc. If we want to get the full detail, we can click into a specific tweet and that'll bring up another little dashboard. At the top, there are some at glance charts and you can use these to see your overall performance and identify any outliers in your data. A strong spike might suggest some level of virality, be it a retweet or a large amount of favorites or replies. To export the data, you can select the export data button in the upper right hand corner. And what you'll get is a CSV file, which can be viewed in any spreadsheet software. At this stage, you can use your Twitter analytics dashboard to really investigate your top performing tweets. And this is something I highly recommend you take some time to look at. Try to determine what caused a particular tweet to succeed along with what caused a tweet to not perform as highly. Understanding your data is really important to building a better strategy and a better strategy will increase the likelihood that you'll achieve your marketing objectives on Twitter. In order to achieve your goals on Twitter, you'll need to attract followers. The more followers, the more exposure your messaging will have. A follower is someone who has chosen to receive your updates in their timeline, and this is the main focus of businesses on Twitter. 
Gaining followers is similar to getting likes on Facebook. The difference here is that 100% of your tweets will be delivered to the timeline of your followers in chronological order. And you can see how many followers you have from your Twitter profile. Now, when you're just starting out, it's going to take some time before you generate momentum. The first 100 or so followers will be very challenging, but if you continue to distribute meaningful and interesting content, that number will rise. I like to call your first 100 followers your seed followers. They're likely going to be the people that you planted or intentionally sought after. They'll help you re-amplify your message to their audience and in turn help you find new followers. And if you have an email list of customers or a close group of colleagues, don't hesitate to reach out to them. Even a meetup, leverage those contacts that you already have and share your Twitter handle with them. It's not that big of a commitment to follow someone on Twitter, so you shouldn't see too much resistance when you ask. With your initial audience in place, it's time to grow and attract new followers. And here's five guidelines to help you on your way. First, tweet often. And this means tweeting frequently every single day as much relevant and exciting content as you can. You really can't overtweet as you're starting out, so feel free to try new things and experiment with lots of tweets. And on that notion, it's important to tweet out interesting things. Your audience, especially your new audience, has a lot going on in their feed. They're only going to be interested and excited about things that are new, novel, and relevant. Third, join in on conversations and retweet content. So get active on Twitter. Begin exploring it and retweeting content, responding, replying to people, and create conversations and follow hashtags. Really immerse yourself in what's happening on Twitter. Next, use your Twitter handle wherever you can to drive attention and awareness to the fact that you actually have an account. This way you can spread the word and find other relevant people from other profiles, other mediums, and other networks you might be on. And finally, follow relevant users. The key is to find amazing people in your space or niche. These people are going to be sharing information that's already going to be interesting for your own followers. So by following them, you can retweet their content, you can see what's happening and stay up to date. It will take consistent effort to grow and attract new followers on Twitter, but keep tweeting as if you have 10,000 followers. And if your message is unique and you've targeted the correct audience, you will begin to see some impressive gains over time. Once you have a rock solid profile, it's tempting to start tweeting right away. But before you dive in, it's a good idea to explore what other businesses similar to yours are doing on Twitter. Take a minute to catalog what they're doing well and what you might improve, as well as the level of engagement from their audience. Next, you'll want to follow a core group of users. As a business, who you follow is just as much a part of your brand as what you tweet. People will look at who you're following and make judgments based on what they find. When you follow someone, you're essentially endorsing them. Now, with a personal Twitter profile, we're often a lot less strict with who we follow. We might follow a politically charged profile because we appreciate the perspective. And we might also follow things that we don't necessarily align with or agree on, but find value in staying connected to. As a business, it's better to put things through the perspective of your audience. You might not want your business to be aligned with a political agenda, a particular celebrity, or even other brands. It is important to participate in the Twitter ecosystem. And Twitter is about listening as much as it is about sharing. So identify those awesome users that are going to help your business stay in touch, be relevant, as well as resonate with your audience. Another important factor is a quantity of people you follow. Twitter is a flexible environment. You don't need to, and you probably shouldn't, follow everyone back who follows you. It's tempting, but not necessary. As a rule of thumb, you typically want to have more followers than those you're following. This adds to the perception of credibility and prevents your brand from looking spammy, but do what's right for your business. To start following someone, you can explore your Twitter interface for recommendations, conduct a search at the top of the page, or directly visit a Twitter handle that you've heard about. 
Once you've followed a brand, their tweets will then appear in your timeline and you'll receive timely updates. So start by identifying 10 to 15 relevant Twitter accounts for your business to follow. Then review and interact with their tweets to become an active member of the Twitter community. The primary goal of search on Twitter is to identify conversations people are having. People talk about all sorts of things on Twitter. They'll discuss sports, major life events, news, and even vent about a terrible customer service experience. They also talk a lot about the products they use. And with hundreds of millions of tweets flying around Twitter every day, the likelihood someone is having a conversation that you can add value to is high. Have you ever been at a coffee shop and overheard a conversation that you could add value to? Some of us might just jump in. We'll hand a business card or pitch our idea. With Twitter, think of it like that. It's one big giant coffee shop, only you can search for the exact conversations you want to jump into. And because Twitter's all about having your message seen, it's only appropriate to send out a reply, a retweet, or a mention when you discover a hidden gem. We're going to look at two ways to search for these conversations, basic searches and advanced searches. To be successful, you'll start by making a list of keywords related to your business, products, and competitors. Then imagine yourself in that coffee shop, trade show, or anywhere really that you're likely to find leads. Make another list of the phrases, sentences, or keywords that would indicate to you, hey, that's an opportunity for me to make a sale. We'll start off with a basic search, and we'll find that at the upper right-hand corner where it says search Twitter. It's here that I'm immediately taken to the top tweets for this search result. This is a default view. And this is going to be the top tweets on Twitter based on the search that I've entered. And you'll see that there are images, there'll be videos, and a lot of them use a lot of tags, mentions, and hashtags here. These might be conversations that you want to jump into. And you may notice that the search term that you've entered is bolded within the text. As you scroll through, that will make it really easy for that information to pop out. Now, rather than looking at just the top tweets, you can also look at them as they come in. And that's the latest filter that I just selected. In the latest view, you're going to see all the conversations that are happening around that keyword as they come in real time. That might be better for your purpose. You simply want to decide which filtering makes the most sense for you. Once you find something, you can then decide to retweet it or interact with that conversation. If you do retweet, like, quote, or reply, that account is going to see that notification and they may even click into your account to see what your brand is about. To go a little bit further, I recommend that you explore the advanced search. You'll find this by selecting show next to the search filters at the left. This is a great way to filter through some of your searching queries. On this advanced search dashboard that you have a ton of options to allow you to personalize and customize the information and the search that you're conducting. It might look a little bit complicated, but it's actually really well organized. So let's walk through some of the key features. Here at the top of the screen, under the heading words, next to all of these words, we can include any words that must be in a tweet. This is a phrase, the order doesn't matter, but both of those words need to be included in a tweet in order for it to show up in my search. Below that, within this exact phrase, you can enter the exact phrase you want to search for. Notice also that you can add specific hashtags that you want to show in your results. And so you would enter it in that box to the right where it says these hashtags. Beyond this, we have the ability to filter also by places. This would allow you to target a specific geographic region. So perhaps you want to target a specific race, then you can make sure that you're only searching for a specific location where that race is taking place. Beyond that, we can look for dates. And so we are able to make sure that our search is very relevant to the time frame we're searching for. Take a minute and build and compile an advanced search that really hones in on exactly the types of conversations you're looking for. Anytime you begin using any social network, it's critical to define your core marketing objective. Let's go over how you may wish to leverage Facebook to meet your marketing goals. Facebook has a very different audience 
and the way that people interact with content is slightly different than with Twitter. With Facebook, you have the opportunity to present long form content. That is anything that exceeds 280 characters. Because if you recall, a tweet cannot exceed that many characters, but Facebook posts, they'll let you have longer content. Also, you'll find that Facebook doesn't demand the quantity of updates that Twitter does, so you can get away with a couple of posts per day. The lifespan of Facebook content as well is a lot longer than that of Twitter. So you can consider that as you define your objectives and decide how much time and energy you'll put into various content pieces. At a high level, your main goal on Facebook is likely going to be generating a fan base, and that is done by getting people to like your Facebook page. Whereas on Twitter, you'll be gaining followers. On Facebook, they're called fans. You can leverage this audience to accomplish your business objective. And as much as we saw again with Twitter, this might be to generate brand awareness, increase sales, drive traffic to your website, and so on. Your objective will dictate the type of content you promote and with what frequency. As with most social media, a main objective is to publish content that not only meets your business goals, but is also unique enough to be shared and liked. These actions help to promote your content to a broad audience. So your first step is to define your objective. How will you use Facebook to support your marketing goals? The first step in creating high quality content for Facebook is deciding on your goal. Put another way, what action do you want your reader to take after they consume your content? What will compel them to take action? And what supporting information can you provide to help combat any doubts that they have? Take a minute to answer these questions because doing so will help you put together a framework for building that high quality content. High quality content really requires connecting with your audience with the right message at the right time. And as you go about developing that content, consider that more than a third of Facebook users are viewing your content on their mobile device. This means that the amount of content displayed on the screen before it truncates is going to be less. There's just less screen real estate. So that means you're going to want to find that sweet spot in the amount of characters you use. With that said, aiming for 250 characters or less is a great principle to test. Test it out and see how it works for your business, but it's a great starting point. It is by no means a rule and your audience might enjoy long form content or even extremely short status updates, but it is a great place to start. Also consider using eye catching images with any content that you post. You can even experiment with using links or videos as both are something that Facebook supports. When you're just getting started, it's really a good idea to try all kinds of different posts to see which ones get the most attention from your audience. Visual posts tend to look better and also get a lot more likes, shares, and comments than other kinds of posts, and that is the case for most brands. You can also try posts such as offers or even creating an event for a special occasion. Use a level of responsiveness on each particular piece of content to gauge how well it does. This way you can compare how well a photo does for your audience versus say a strictly text post. And then experiment, try throwing in an infographic, a quote, maybe a behind the scenes photo. Change it up from time to time and see how your audience responds. On Facebook, posts that contain a video or image are king. And the rapid success of platforms such as Instagram and Pinterest, which are very image heavy, only help reinforce that idea. People love looking at photos and engaging with videos. They're a great way to drive additional attention to your posts. Let's take a look at how you can get photos or videos included in those Facebook posts on your Facebook page. The first option is to simply upload a photo or video. We can also create a photo album, a photo carousel, a slideshow, as well as a canvas. And a canvas allows you to tell immersive stories by combining images and videos. But we'll start with the basics. So I'm gonna select upload photos and videos. Then I'm gonna locate the files that I want to download. Selecting that, Facebook is gonna upload it and it shows me a thumbnail 
in the bottom left hand corner. Here we have the option to do some tagging. So here I'm able to either tag a product as well as I can edit the photo. If I select edit, it's here in this new pop-up screen that I can add a filter. Again, I can tag any products that appear in the image itself. I have the ability to crop the image. I can add text and then I can even add some stickers. So these are some additional ways that you can kind of jazz up any images that you're including in a post. But oftentimes simple is best. So you don't need to get too fancy with the photos that you upload. Now, if you want to add video, it's going to be a little bit easier. So the first thing that you're going to do is again, select the photo and video, and then you're going to select the video file that you may have saved on your computer. A simpler way and a way that I definitely recommend is to already have your video saved to either YouTube or Vimeo. Next thing I recommend doing is actually removing this link because it's already going to be included in the image. And then I can type in my text. Once that's completed, I'm going to scroll down and select publish so we can see how this looks. Now you can also share links to articles the same way. And when you do that, you'll have the option to edit the image that is applied to the post as well. Facebook really gives you great control over how you can embed a photo and customize that media. With those links, it really gives you the option to apply that visual interest, but still give people the chance to click through the link instead of just enlarging a photo. Experiment with rich media in your posts because a single photo can go a long way in increasing the engagement of your content. With your business on Facebook, you'll be looking to gain those all important fans. As you increase your fan base, you'll be increasing your reach. So the more fans you have, the more opportunities your content has to be seen and shared. When a Facebook fan likes, comments, or shares one of your posts, their network of friends and family will likely see that endorsement on their personal newsfeed. The first step to gaining those initial fans is by letting people know about your page. And that's fairly straightforward. And don't be afraid to let people know that you want them to like your Facebook page and that it does indeed exist. So from your Facebook page, you can scroll down and on the right hand side, you'll see a lot of suggestions from Facebook as well as how your page is performing. If you keep on scrolling, you'll see your community. And this is where you can see the activity of your friends on the page. It's also where you're able to invite friends. Now, another fairly obvious way to get more people to like your page is to do an individual post. When you do that, it makes it really easy for people to click the like button. So I always suggest making an opportunity or some sort of incentive for people to like it. You don't have to create all these promotions and all these contents, but if you can come up with a unique proposition, then you're really going to help encourage people to take that specific action. Next, another great way to get more likes is to put a like button in your website or your blog or other locations that you are online. It's super easy. If you simply Google Facebook like buttons, it's going to direct you to the developers.facebook.com page. And from here is where you can configure various buttons a like button, a page plugin, you have a save button, a share button. So with the action type, I can choose a like or I can choose a recommend. It's just gonna change the languaging in the button. I like having like displayed. I can also choose a button size, small or large. And then I have the option to show friends faces as well as include the share button. The so once that's complete, super quick and easy, I'm going to select get code. This is a code that you're going to need to place where you want your plugin or your like button to show up. So this would be on your blog. This would be on specific pages on your website. So you can get really creative and take a look at what other people are doing and where they're placing these buttons. The biggest thing for growing likes on Facebook is to not be afraid of letting people know that you want them to like your page. Create interesting and compelling content and be confident in that your Facebook page is helpful and is a place that people want to go to interact and engage with your brand. Take steps now to create those new likes, whether it be a like button, inviting friends, or a simple post from your Facebook page.
To build a thriving community on Facebook, it's critical to interact with your fans. Aside from working to create high quality content, be sure you're staying on top of your comments and feedback. A thriving community requires engagement. Fans appreciate brands that take the time to respond and it's common practice to reply to fan comments directly on your Facebook page. You can even use that as an opportunity to direct them to alternative support channels, such as a phone number or email account. Now, beyond responding, there are other ways that you can engage your audience. You can ask them questions, share ideas, request feedback, and do anything that you can to create a unique opportunity for participation. So these could be things like surveys, contests, as well as just soliciting some feedback on a new product. Next, build engagement into your Facebook strategy. Create milestones and goals for your interactions, such as ensuring comments are responded to within one hour or less. Facebook makes it really easy for businesses to track their user comments and notifications, so be sure to use this in your customer management process. Whether you like this fact or not, you will need to take steps to manage it. Getting ahead of this will benefit your business and you'll find that engaged fans are pivotal in your brand's growth, sales, and will help you create a thriving community online. Growth on Facebook is hinged to your ability to engage with your fans. Begin to take a look at how you can ensure you're engaging with your Facebook fans and start providing them with unique opportunities to participate. 